Inflation has made everything stupid expensive. Anybody remember dollar menus? And just because you can't get a McChicken for a dollar anymore doesn't mean that there aren't good deals to be found on film cameras. Lucky for us, they made millions and millions of film cameras year after year for almost a century. So there are tons of great options out there to be had. And in this video, I'm gonna show you 50 awesome film cameras that you can still buy for less than $50 or thereabout. Don't yell at me if some of them are just a few bucks more. Okay, deal. The first camera that I was gonna talk about was the Ricoh 35ZF. The camera has a 40 millimeter 2.8 ultra compact metal body. You can see it's really small, almost small enough that you could get it inside your pocket. The camera is automatic with a manual aperture selection mode. Like many of the old Ricoh cameras, the camera just looks great. The styling is super, super cool. And with that all metal, durable build quality, the camera's gonna stand up to whatever you've got to throw at it. Another popular option is the Yashica 35 Electro GTN. This camera comes fitted with a 45 millimeter 1.7 lens. Looks amazing. It's got automatic exposure. The camera, again, it's a rangefinder design. And again, this camera's also made completely of metal. Really, really nice build quality. I don't know what it's there for, but it's got a sleek nuclear atom design over in the corner of the camera. Very 50s, very cool. What more could you want? This camera is also gonna be very portable, easy to take with you. There's a little bit of weight to it. That's pretty much par for the course with these all metal cameras. Next on the list is another Yashica, the Yashica MG1. The Electro 35 is a little too rich for your blood. Take a look at the MG1. Again, this is another very small, very compact camera. It's all metal build quality. Again, just like the Yashica Electro 35, this camera also has all metal build quality. So it's gonna be a little heavy, but you're gonna get some durability in exchange for that. And the main reason that I can tell that this is cheaper than the Electro has to do with its lens. It's a bit slower speed. It's an f2.8 lens rather than the 1.7 from the Yashica Electro. But if you're trying to save a few bucks, this is a great option. Camera that I actually still have in my collection. I think everybody needs a good Russian Leica clone. It's the Fed 2. The Fed 2 is a Russian Leica clone and it has a Leica screw mount. The camera is built solidly and made almost entirely out of metal. There's a huge number of lenses available. You've got the entire Leica screw mount system available to you. So plenty of lenses out there for you to shoot. And the cameras can be had for next to nothing. If you're thinking about buying an expensive Leica camera down the road, there's no reason not to pick up a Russian copy and try to get a feel for the system. The next camera on the list is the Kiev 4. It wasn't just the Leicas that the Soviets copied, but they also used their tracing paper on the contacts too. It wasn't actually tracing paper that they used, the Soviets actually took the machines that the Germans used to create the cameras, and then they started using those machines to make their own versions of the cameras. Next camera on the list is the Ricoh 500G. Look at, just look at those sexy fonts that Ricoh used on this camera. The lens is a Zeiss Tessar based 40 millimeter 2.8 Rockinon lens made of four elements in three groups. The camera operates in both semi-automatic and manual shooting modes and has a lot meter. I mean, what more do you possibly want? The Minolta Highmatic 7S. Talk about a good looking camera. Just gorgeous good looks here. The Minolta Highmatic 7S was released in 1966. It boasts a sharp six element 45 millimeter 1.8 Rocor lens. Minolta's own CLC contrast light compensation metering via cadmium sulfate cells. Aperture range from f22 all the way down to f1.8. Again camera lots of metal featured in the construction of the camera built like a tank. Reasonably fast lens as well, so it's gonna be great for low lighting. This is a great option, very affordable, great cameras. Another camera that I thought was notable and I wanted to include on this list for a very particular reason is the Olympus Pen EE2. And the reason why that I wanted to include a camera like this is it's a half frame option. If cost is something that's important to you, and obviously you're watching a video about buying cheap cameras, so it probably is, um, the half frame cameras are great because you can get twice as many shots on a roll of 35 millimeter film. Uh, perhaps you'll lose a little bit of image quality, but doubling your shots, especially when you're just starting with photography, it's a great option to really save you some money. The camera has a nice wide 28 millimeter 3.5 Zuiko lens, makes it very easy to shoot. And what's cooler than the word Zuiko? All those cameras that we just talked about, most of those were rangefinder designs. Um, let's move on to talking about some cameras with a little more automatic functionality. And these are gonna be vastly different shooting experiences than the rangefinders. But the first camera that I had on the list was the Canon SureShot 60 Zoom. These are really reliable, really easy to use point and shoot cameras. Camera comes with a 38 millimeter F4.5 lens, which is zoomable to 60 millimeter F6.7. So not the broadest lens that's ever made, but this camera is super small, pocketable, and you don't have to worry too much about damaging it. Um, these things can be had for next to nothing. And really these cameras to me are for somebody who's thinking about using disposable cameras or like those new plastic, like fixed aperture plastic cameras that they're all over the marketplace these days. I think a lot of these old compact point and shoot zoom cameras um, that they made for a really long time, 
uh, represent a great option in contrast with the, the more recent fixed aperture cameras. You're gonna get better images and a lot more functionality out of one of these cameras. And I think for the price, definitely worth it. Another Canon camera on the list is the Canon Prima Super 28. This list wouldn't be complete without more of these touristy special cameras. Uh, this is another plasticky 35 millimeter point and shoot camera that aims to do just about anything and everything. It has a 28 millimeter to 70 millimeter variable aperture zoom lens, and it's got a piece of glass on the front of it that's so small, you're gonna be looking at it and trying to figure out how they could possibly get enough light to cover a 35 millimeter frame of film. Let's don't get bogged down in the detail. This is another great starter film camera option. And again, contrasting it with those fixed aperture point and shoot cameras, I think one of these is a much better option. And a camera from Minolta, the Minolta Freedom Zoom 90. It's a very flexible 38 millimeter to 90 millimeter zoom lens on this camera. It's all automatic, everything. It's gonna do everything you need it to do. It's a point and shoot. And again, it's a camera that's so small, you could slip it in your jean pockets and never know it's there. These cameras can also be had for next to nothing. These cameras are awesome starter cameras as well. The next camera on the list is the Konica C35MF Hexanon 38 millimeter 2.8 auto. Wow, that's a lot of things. And we all want a fancy point and shoot camera and this camera is definitely a step in that direction. It isn't the casual touristy camera that you get with the other options. Um, this is going to be a little bit more serious because it does feature a prom lens. Prom lens, desirable for me, that's something I look for in these point and shoots. You're going to get a little better image quality. You're going to have some constraints that go along with that, but I rather enjoy those constraints. On to the Olympus Trip 500. This is a fully automatic compact point and shoot camera from Olympus. Some of this comes down to a matter of preference, but this camera also has a prime lens. And again, like I said, I'm partial to a prime lens. It does the weird sliding thing like a 2000s model cell phone, but that does offer a great option to protect the lens on the front of the camera if you are doing something like just cramming the camera inside your pocket. Everybody knows Olympus makes good stuff, and this camera is no different. And here's a classic camera on the list. that I think it would probably be really tough to find one of these for under $50, but they're still relatively inexpensive. But the Nikon L35 AF. Introduced in 1983, the L35 AF was Nikon's very first autofocus compact camera. And many words have been said about this camera and many videos made about it as well. So if you want more details, uh, go somewhere else. These cameras look very interesting, love the black and orange color scheme, and the lens is very sharp. You can find one of these cameras for cheap, they're a good time. The next camera is the interestingly named Canon SureShot Owl. Yes, like a, like a hoot owl. <laughs> now this is a Canon camera on the list that's a little different from the first two we talked about. This camera does come with a prime lens. This camera comes with a 35 millimeter 4.5 prime lens. And my favorite thing about this camera is they make a special Marlboro branded version of the camera. That way you could express your love for your favorite cigarette brand um, while you're shooting film photography. Wow, what a world. On a more serious note, the Olympus XA. This camera's got a 35 millimeter 3.5 prime lens. It's got the nifty sliding cover. Must have been a thing Olympus was into. Cameras are durable, complex six element lens designs with exotic glass tops and sophisticated manufacturing. These cameras are really, really good. So a lot of the technological advancements that we had towards the end of film are present in this camera. The lens also has internal focusing, which is going to make for some added durability. And it's worth noting that these are getting harder to find, especially at good prices. Pentax PC 35AF. Kind of like the Olympus camera, much easier to find and definitely much easier to find at an affordable price. And to make things even better, this camera features an f2.8 speed lens. So a little faster lens than the Olympus. If you're having a hard time finding the Olympus, uh, this Pentax will do just fine. Our second Minolta Hymatic making its appearance on the list, the Minolta Hymatic AF2. Another camera with a 38 millimeter f2.8 lens. This is a little larger camera than the two previous versions, but if you've got big hands and you don't want the teeny tiny cramped up design of some of these other cameras, this camera is also a great option. Prime lens on the camera is fast and and gonna lead to some great images. The Fujika Compact S Silver, 38 millimeter f2.5. Looks old, it's mostly made out of metal. If you want that compact point and shoot style, you're not big on plastic, um, this camera this camera gives you that metal build, that more substantial feeling camera. So really cool option from Fujika. Another compact point and shoot uh, worth talking about is the Ricoh FF9 or the FF9D. This is another one of those high quality point and shoot cameras. This camera also features internal focusing and a prime lens on the front of the camera. The, the lens is a very sharp 35 millimeter F3.5 lens. The camera looks great, it's got a flash, do a great job for you. The Yashica MF2 Super. Camera comes with a 38 millimeter F3.8 lens. They're getting pretty popular and harder to find for cheap. The black and orange color scheme looks really great. And for those who are wondering, it's the only camera on my list with MF in the name. 
the Ricoh AF5. You can think of this camera really as like a Ricoh GR negative three, right? Like it was the, maybe the Ricoh GR predecessor line. It's got a 35 millimeter 2.8 lens and a big old flash. The camera looks a little antiquated, but maybe not necessarily in a good way, kind of like your grandma. But you can still get one of these cameras for reasonably cheap. It's gonna do everything you need it to do. And now we're stepping into the future with some SLR designs. The first camera on the list is the Petri FT. And you only thought Petri made dishes. Terrible dad joke. But if you want an SLR camera that's gonna cost you less than a case of soda, well, the Petri FT is one of your only options. Petri as a company was always a step or two behind the competition. And it's, it probably explains why they're not a company anymore. In terms of features, the camera is a bog standard SLR design with a built-in light meter. And looking at prices on eBay, you could have this camera or three tacos from Taco Bell. The choice is yours. Next is the Pentax P3. Do you want an SLR that looks not very great and is made out of plastic? Well, this is a great option for you. The good news about the camera is it does have full automatic functionality on it. So if you want a camera that's gonna take most of the think out of it, this one's gonna do it for you. There are lots of great affordable lenses out there for this camera and the prices on the camera bodies themselves are very reasonable as well. So a great option if you want an SLR with a lot of automatic functionality for a reasonable price. If you're looking for something with just a little more build quality, the Mamiya Secor 500 DTF, I mean DTL. The camera's just as simple as you could imagine, SLR, um, in contrast to some of the options that we've talked about previously, the camera is going to have really good build quality, really good design. The camera is mostly made of metal. Lenses are super cheap as well. So if you want a great camera from a great company, um, this is a great option. The Fujika ST605. This is another really great classic looking camera. Everything made mostly of metal, really high build quality. And the Pentax MG. Really good looks, classic looks. The camera's bulletproof and going to work forever. The Olympus OM10. No, not the Micro Four Thirds one, but the one that one's probably based on. It's such a good looking camera, really great build quality. And I said it previously in this video, but Olympus makes good stuff. Um, you could do a lot worse than an Olympus OM10 35 millimeter camera. The Canon FTB. This is an early Canon SLR camera design. This is really a workhorse film camera. It's manual everything, very little in the camera to go wrong. The camera's built almost entirely out of metal and it's gonna last, I don't know, a million years. And the Nikon EM. Camera looks great. One big benefit of this camera is it's got an F mount. So you're gonna be availing yourself to the whole lifetime of Nikon F mount lenses. Um, so good lenses are out there for very cheap. It's a great camera option. It's a Nikon, it's an SLR, and it's about 25 bucks. So you could do a lot worse than one of these cameras too. The Ashika FR2. This is a mostly metal SLR design. Again, classic design, classic good looks. Camera is relatively compact, and the best part of all is it does have an automatic meter, so that's great. The Contax 139 Quartz. This is a cheapie from one of my favorite companies in the film photography game. I guess the only trouble is it wasn't really a Contax camera. The camera is really a rebadged Yashica from their partnership. The camera is built well enough though. It's mostly made out of metal. The lenses are made by Zoss and all perform just like you think a Zoss lens will perform. Exception. The downside though is that you'll have to probably pay a little bit more for them. The camera does have some auto modes. And the Pentax K1000. Now lots of videos have been made about this camera and it is getting more popular as well. This camera used to be kind of a secret awesome option in the film photography space but it's becoming a little more. But the secret's out and it's becoming a little more widespread. Pentax K1000 is one of photography's greatest, most popular, and longest lived cameras. It's an all metal reliable camera. The camera has no automated functionality, but it does come with a built-in lot meter. Cameras look great, and like I said, because of YouTubers and their recent popularity, um, these are becoming harder to find. And moving on to a few automatic SLR designs. I know that I included a few auto cameras in the previous section, but you know, you get what you pay for. The Konica TCX. The good news is that it's an SLR with automatic features and interchangeable lenses, and can be had for less than about 20 bucks. The bad news though, is that this camera is made from about the same material as the dashboard from a 19. 91 Toyota Corolla. It's real cheap and you'll know that from the second that you pick it up. That said, it's a pretty good camera for the price. The Minolta X370, or later model film camera. So with that comes the more recent technological advancements. Let's have autofocus and auto exposure. The Konica Auto Reflex T3, Konica Terminator 3. Let me name the cameras. Camera's automatic once again, slightly better looking though than the previous cameras we've had in the video. But I must confess that these are getting harder to find under my arbitrary threshold of $50. Might have to pay 70 or 80 or 90 or something. The Ricoh XR1, it's an auto SLR, super simple. And not the most beautiful camera. Once again, lots of plastic in the construction, but automatic exposure and autofocus. Also, these cameras can be had for relatively cheap. Now, here we are. Now, here's one of the better options in the video, so listen close. The Olympus OM2. Auto SLR. Metal construction. 
gorgeous design, a legendary camera. And again, we got that $50 arbitrary threshold that I've put on the video. You might have to pay a little more for this. I don't know, unless you're like one of these YouTubers. That Ooh, I went to a yard sale and bartered for a Leica M6 for, for four raspberries. I digress, the video's gone long, I'm losing focus. Where were we? Olympus OM2, great camera. If you can pick one of these up for a reasonable price, you should do it, I should do it. We're gonna do it. The Minolta X570. This camera also, high build quality, great lens selection, and automatic everything. Noticing a trend here, we're getting kind of pricey down the stretch. My eyes are getting bigger than my wallet. Um, but this camera's another one that you may have a hard time finding for under 50 bucks. Might have to skip a meal at McDonald's to be able to slip this one into the budget. The, the Canon AV-1. It's called AV, despite it having nothing to do with audio or video, but we won't get bogged down in the details. Pretty high build quality, but plastic in all the right places. Camera has a bevy of automatic functions. Pentax ME Super. While it wasn't the best version of Windows, it actually is a pretty good SLR. Again, sorry. And for the next category, we got simple slash disposable cameras. The first one is the Vivitar PN2011. It really rolls off the tongue. These are 35 millimeter focus-free fixed aperture lenses. The cameras are not the greatest to use in low light situations, but with that consideration taken into account, they can be pretty good. When Kodak Ektar H35. These are brand new, still being manufactured plastic cameras. They're simple point and shoot cameras with narrow apertures and fixed focus. There are lots of videos out there with folks shooting these little nuggets, but the most important thing to know about them is like the Olympus pin that we talked about earlier in the video, this is a half frame camera. So you're gonna, you're gonna double your exposures um, with a roll of 35 millimeter film. But if you don't want to take a chance on your camera being covered in boogers and cigarette smoke, um, you can buy one of these brand new. Lomography simple use camera. This is one that I've got on my shelf behind me. These are great simple point and shoot cameras. They are reloadable. That's the cool thing about them. Um, they're fixed aperture cameras. The Lomography simple use cameras, they have these weird little screens that you can flip down in front of the flash um, to change the color of the light that you're splashing onto a subject. That's really neat. You can also get these preloaded with any of Lomography's interesting film stocks like Lomography Purple or Color 92 or Turquoise, those kinds of things. These cameras are dope. I really love mine. It's the time in the video that I promised that we would get to, and that's where I give you my recommendation for the best film camera that you can buy under $50. And for most of you guys starting out, the best camera that you can buy is getting in your little car, driving to your local Walmart, and throwing down a good crisp 20 and getting a Fujifilm quick snap disposable camera. For many of us living in really rural parts of the world, it's probably the only film camera that you could leave your house right now and obtain. So you can take your Lakas and you can take your contacts and your Hasselblads and all your expensive BS. If you're just getting started, you wanna test the waters of film photography, go out, get in your Toyota Prius and drive to your Walmart and get a point and shoot camera. 15 bucks, 16 bucks, 17 bucks, whatever they are, that's where it's at. You're gonna get all the joys of shooting film, the wonderful film grain, the wonderful film colors, all of that can be obtained for less than 20 bucks. So give it a try. There's so many great cameras out there that can still be had for next to nothing. But take a look at this video where I go shoot that Lomography Simple Use camera in downtown Knoxville with a roll of Lumochrome Purple. As always guys though, thank you so much for watching. We'll see you next time.